Hi, my name is Steve Clifford, and today I want to talk about how to prepare for a scout rifle class. Now, these can be called scout rifle, practical rifle, or general rifle, and they're offered by a variety of different people. But all of them basically boil down to teaching the fundamentals. And there are some things that you can do to help prepare yourself, both mentally, physically, and with your equipment, to help get you ready for this class. I've taken four of these so far. Twice I took practical rifle from Randy Kane, once in Florida and once in West Virginia. Florida would be nice right about now. It's about 35 degrees here in Virginia where I'm doing this. I, I took the uh, scout rifle class from the Steyer Academy down in Talladega, Alabama. The instructors at that were uh, Richard Mann and Mario Marchman. That was really exciting. And I also took the five and a half day scout rifle class from Tom Russell out at the Whittington Center in New Mexico. And what I learned is that there are a number of things you can do to really be able to appreciate the class more and get the most out of the class. And it's all things that you can do ahead of time. So number one, let's get your mind ready for this. So you need to buy this book. This is The Art of the Rifle from Jeff Cooper. Jeff Cooper didn't develop the rifle fundamentals, but he put them in writing in a format that makes a lot of sense. He also developed the training curriculum that most people are using nowadays. So read through this, read it cover to cover. Make sure you understand what is being communicated. The more you understand going in, the more you're going to understand when it's taught to you. And really there is something very cool about the idea that Jeff Cooper, when he wrote all of this, he had a number of instructors around him, people like Randy Kane and Tom Russell and others. And those people are still conducting the classes. So they are, they're really just channeling Jeff Cooper in these classes. And if you've read this, you know and recognize it. It will mean more to you. So the next thing that you can do is to watch videos on YouTube. But be a little careful and selective about who you are watching these. Um, the uh, Illing New put together a series of, uh, boy, there is a woodpecker making a lot of noise. Sorry about that. That just distracted me. All right. So Illing New is an instructor at Gunsight and she is really, really well regarded. And she put together a series of videos on the Ruger Gunsight Scout. Those are terrific videos. Watch them, pay attention, listen to how she describes things. Um, Richard Mann has several videos, both on YouTube and on his uh, Empty Cases website. Highly recommend. Uh, there's a YouTube channel by Lucky Gunner, where he, if you search his, uh, his YouTube channel, you'll find a couple of them on practical and scout rifles. Again, really good stuff. So you can prepare yourself that way. The other way is something fairly new. Uh, Tom Russell came up with an idea before his last scout rifle class, and he said he's going to be doing this every time he offers a scout rifle class. He has Zoom meetings. So you meet face-to-face -face with him and other students every Thursday night, starting at about two to three months before the class starts. It's an hour on Thursday nights, and he goes over everything from conditioning to expectations, lodging, travel everything that you're gonna to need to know. So contact Tom Russell, send him your email, ask to be put on his email list because you can attend these Zoom meetings if you're considering taking his class. So highly recommend that, it's really useful. Okay, we've got you mentally prepared, now let's talk about physically being prepared. If you already have a good exercise routine, I'm gonna to add to it in just a second, but if you are not exercising on a regular basis, I gotta tell you, I wasn't either. And I let us a very I lead a very sedentary, I have a job that just doesn't get me up much. And so I really wasn't getting that much exercise. So I just committed 20 minutes, wake up 20 minutes early, grab my rifle and shooting mat and go down into my basement and just do some basic calisthenics, some stretching exercises, some deep knee bends, some lunges, some push-ups. I spend a little bit of time on a rowing machine, but an elliptical or stationary bike or treadmill, whatever you can do, get your heart rate up. Do it for 20 minutes and it will pay huge dividends when you get to your class. 
if you're already doing some uh, some exercises, bring your rifle along and start adding this into your routine. Start adding in, getting into the shooting positions. And after you read The Art of the Rifle, you'll know how to get into a basic kneeling position. And, and go down into the kneeling position five times and recover. Then go down into squat five times and recover. Drop down into sitting five times. And then by the time you get to dropping into prone, your heart rate's gonna be up. That's a good thing. Now I talked to uh, Tom about this and I said, is it really a good idea to have people doing all of this practice when they might not be doing the, the, the position correctly. He said, Steve, that's not really the issue. We can correct technique when they get to the class, but helping them get used to getting down and back up, down and back up, because they're gonna be doing it so much in class. When I took the my last practical rifle class from Randy Kane, he actually had the, uh, stopped the line and told people to watch me dropping down into the sitting position. He said, watch Steve do this. He just melts down into that position. Well, it's not that I'm so good or talented, it's that I do it a lot. And so it's very natural for me to drop down into that sitting position. So it's repetition. Do it five times a piece every single morning and you'll be in great shape for the class. Okay, let's talk about getting your gun ready for the class. Um, make sure your rifle is ready. Make sure it's properly set. Uh, use Loctite on your scope rings. Uh, if you have a, um, a sling that has Chicago screws, use Loctite on them. Believe me, if you don't, they're going to come loose and you'll be frustrated. It happens every single class. If you have a Ruger, the Ruger Gunsight Scout has a habit of losing the screw that holds the, um, the bolt stop. And so Loctite that sucker in place. The next thing is please, please, please do not show up for a class with a rifle that you haven't sighted in. <laughs> I know it sounds basic, but you need to, to have this gun already sighted in. If you show up to class with a scope on a gun that you've never fired before, you're hurting yourself. You're taking away from both your time and the other student's time doing work on a bench that should have been done before you got to the class. So look up how to sight in a rifle. You need to get your groups about two inches high at 100 yards. That'll get you in great shape. If you don't have access to a 100 yard range, but you can find a 25 yard range, uh, get yourself dead on at 25 yards. Not too terribly difficult to do, and it'll save you a lot of time and frustration when you do get out to the, to the, uh, to the training facility. Next thing, let's talk about magazines. So the, uh, the Steyr comes with two magazines, one in the stock and one up front. Can you get by a class with only two magazines? If you had to, but you're not gonna be happy. Um, a lot of the drills that you'll be doing is you'll stand up there and you might go you know, 15, 20 rounds and then go up and tape your target. Well, if you only have 10 rounds loaded, that means you're going to have to learn the skill of loading while holding your gun, or you, you may be asked to sling it. You'll probably be asked to sling it. And then you're sitting there furiously trying to load while the rest of the class is standing there looking at you. If you can figure out a way to get at least four magazines, do it. You'll be much happier having four loaded mags up at the line. If you can get more, bring more. I bring 10. That's a little overkill, but at no point do I ever feel like, man, I, I hope we call a break soon. I hope I get to go back to the staging area and, and grab more ammo. With 10 loaded magazines, you've got 50 rounds at the line, perfect shape. How do you manage all those rounds? Well, two in the gun, two more in, and I use these uh, wilderness pouches. I really like these. I have one on here. They're low profile enough so that when I'm going down into kneeling or squat or anything like that, it's not poking into my gut. You guys with the AICS magazines, those are a little taller. You're gonna to have to slide those more over to the, uh, to the side, but still manageable. So I've got four between the pouches and the gun. I usually have one in the cargo pocket of my pants, and then I have more 
in a bag or ammo can just sitting on the ground. Now, depending on the facility and the training, you may or may not need those extra rounds sitting, sitting that close to you. I liked having that. Um, I talked to Ed Head at Gunsight as I prepared for this. He seems to think that isn't really necessary, but I like having it. So you also need a dump pouch of some sort. These magazines are very expensive. Simple dump pouch on your belt will work. Just watch where you place it so it doesn't get in the way when you go into your shooting positions. I have used a, uh, a thigh pouch, but honestly, I couldn't find it before I started this video, but that worked really well as well. So ammo management with magazines, pay attention to it. You guys that have the hinged floor plate rifles, you actually have it easier. Um, you have no detachable magazine. Grab a handful of ammo and stuff it in the cargo pocket of your pants. That's all you need to do. Uh, every time you get done with a, with a string, pull out rounds and start stuffing them in the gun. It's very quick and easy. You guys are not gonna slow anybody down. So you have 25 rounds in your pocket. Again, have an ammo bag nearby with, with another 25, 30 rounds and you're in great shape. Um, let's talk about pants real quick. So I like 511 pants. 511 pants have uh, you know, plenty of pockets, they're rugged, they're durable, but they have one other feature that a lot of people are not aware of, and that is they have double thick knees because there is a pocket in there. And that pocket holds neoprene knee pads. These are really handy. You put these neoprene knee pads in, they're not in the way. You don't look like Mr. Tactical SWAT guy with the big old knee pads. But if you drop down into, into dirt or sand or anything else, it's gonna protect your knees. Uh, Randy Kane holds a class where he's basically on a, it's almost like a golf course. It's a nice grassy area. You shouldn't need knee pads, but what if a hurricane just went through the day before? Well, that's what happened to me the last time I went and the place was soaked and these kept my knees from getting all wet. The other advantage to these is when you go down into your sitting position, your elbows are gonna be on your knees. Well, that gives a nice cushioned place to rest your elbows every time you go into sitting or kneeling or one of the other supported positions. So really highly recommend the knee pads. I also really do, oh, sling. Let's talk about slings real quick. Um, some people show up to classes without a proper sling. They bring a carry strap. Don't be that guy. Um, you need a proper sling. And by a sling, I mean one that has a loop that you can lock your arm into. If you have a three-point attachment, the obvious choice is a ching sling. It's got that loop and you're gonna be locked into it good and tight. Uh, if you only have two positions, you've got some choices. Um, Galco makes what they call their Safari Ching. Uh, some people like that. I don't, but Illing Nu seems to like it. She uses it on her uh, on her video series. Galco now has a new one called the uh, Rifle Man Sling that was developed in conjunction with uh, Richard Mann. It has a proper loop and will lock you into it. But most people are using the Andes Rhodesian Sling, Andes Leather, andesleather.com. Uh, very simple solution. It makes for good carry strap, but you can also use it as a loop sling. It works really, really well. Highly recommend it. The last couple of times I've gone to a class, I brought this sling with me and I end up loaning it out to people and, and it's usually very much appreciated. Uh, scopes. Let's talk scopes before we finish up. So if all you have is a four to 14 by 50 scope, you can bring that. You're going to wish you didn't. You're going to wish that you had a low power variable scope or a scout scope. And the reason is a lot of your shooting is done very close range. You're going to start at 10 yards and then go all the way back, depending on the facility, anywhere from two to 300 yards. Uh, scout scopes work great. Low power variables. You know, the one to sixes, the one to fives, anything like that is great. Two to seven is about the maximum that you're going to need out there and the maximum you're going to want. So uh, two, two and a half power is the, is the maximum that you're going to want for, those closer in, for that closer in work. And that's going to be work with a snapshot. So 
think about scopes before you go out. Um, shooting mat, everything else. Talk to your instructor, give them a call, ask them what types of equipment they recommend, look at their website. All of them have a website where they have required equipment. Some of them will say, here's the optional things you can bring. Uh, you know, pay attention to things like hydration and footwear and rain gear and all of that. But everything that I've gone over, hopefully will help you in getting yourself better prepared for your scout rifle class. My name is Steve Clifford, and if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you.